Welcome to Off The Hanger, the fashion podcast where we delve deep into our guests' wardrobes, finding out their favourite fashion pieces and the stories behind them. This week's guest is marketing entrepreneur and fellow podcaster, Lindsay May. But before we get started, if I could ask that you maybe like, subscribe, comment, follow, leave a rating, that would be great, or a review if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, and it really does help the podcast grow. I hope you enjoy this episode. Lindsay, thank you so much for being on Off The Hanger today. It's really lovely to talk to you. Now, we've got a slight time difference though, haven't we? Because you're in a completely different part of the world to me. Yes, I am in Denver, Colorado in the US and we're just winging it with technology, but I'm so excited to be here with you. So thanks for having me. That's it, the joys of technology. When it works, it's incredible. And I don't understand how it works, but then when it doesn't work, it's so frustrating. But we're here, we're ready, and yes. excited to look through your wardrobe. But before we jump in, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. So you work as a marketing entrepreneur, don't you? Yes, I've been in marketing for basically my entire career. I actually started as a journalist before that, but that was just a few years where I got a taste of fashion and all of that, and I just loved it so much. And then I realized I kind of need a big girl job now. I need to go out and pursue something else. So I went into marketing, and I've been in marketing for about 13 years now, and climbed the corporate ladder and then realized again, maybe I need to do this on my own, on my own terms and start my own business. So I did. I launched the Happy Marketing Co. about a year ago now. So it's been really fun. It's been fun to navigate. But yes, now I'm a full-time entrepreneur. And I think fashion actually is a version of marketing because it's how we market ourselves and our personal brand to the world around us. We do it by the clothes that we wear before we even speak. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, people working from home think that sometimes they can't be fashionable. But I think by putting on a necklace or a jacket or a fun top, you can be fashionable no matter what you're doing in business. But I do love what you just said. I absolutely think we're kind of marketing ourselves creatively with everything that we put on, whether we're in a meeting or going to happy hour. And so it's just so fun. I love fashion so much. And it's been fun to kind of go on a fashion journey myself as now an entrepreneur, but I'm obsessed. Did you love fashion as a child? Have you got an earliest fashion memory? Yes, I've always loved fashion. And I think it's mostly because I've loved being independent and kind of choosing my own outfits. And so I have this memory of me as a small little girl and I'm wearing a bikini and I'm like owning it. It's red with white polka dots and my parents are just filming me and cracking up and you know, I think it really is a reflection of our personalities, too, and how we feel about ourselves. And so I do remember just, you know, completely feeling myself and being confident. And as you know, when we grow up, sometimes we lose that a little bit. So sometimes I just go back and watch those videos or look at the images and say, she knew exactly who she was and felt so confident. And I think we all need to be reminded of the little girl version of, of ourselves sometimes. That's it, embracing that inner child and thinking about what they would love to wear and the things that brought them joy when they got dressed. Yes, absolutely. Is there an oldest piece in your wardrobe? Ooh, yes. So I actually have some accessories to show too, because something about me is I love jewelry and I love bags. So let me show you this piece and I'll give a little context first. My mother is basically a luxury bag broker. And so she finds the most incredible luxury bags out there. Some of them are kind of losing, you know, their buckles a little bit or the leather is a little bit worn down. But she will find these incredible pieces and basically refurbish them or take them back into the shop and get them redone. So let me show you this. It's my one of my favorites. So this is my big Louis Vuitton like travel weekender bag. And as you can see, it's it's not brand new, but it is in such good condition for being decades and decades old. And I just I love it so much that sometimes I'll bring it to a work meeting and just throw my laptop in there because it's just it has so much history. I mean, you can see, you know, the little elements that we know about Louis Vuitton and we love about Louis Vuitton. But knowing that this has aged and been in so many different women's and men's hands, but they've traveled with it and had fun experience with it. 
And then my mom found it and cleaned it up. And she, you know, got some of the leather redone with Louis Vuitton, which is actually a great program. If you ever have a Louis Vuitton that just needs a little bit of a cleanup or you need to change the zipper out, they will work with you to do that. So I love this piece so much because it's just historical for Louis Vuitton, but also it's so relevant now. And I think we're realizing that the history of luxury bags, we can still carry that with us and everything doesn't have to be brand new and and super clean and beautiful, but we can kind of represent the past and where these brands have come from. And do you know how old it is? So my mom told me that it's from the 60s. And a fun fact about Louis Vuitton is sometimes you can't see the tag anymore because it's just aged so much. And in every Louis Vuitton bag, they have you know, either a stamp or a tiny little tag. And that's what they had when these bags were, you know, in production so many years ago. So it's from the 1960s. And again, it's in such great shape that you just know that it's been loved and taken care of. And you can, again, clean it up now and make it look, you know, incredibly relevant and all these things and still use it, which is what we all want to do with our Louis Vuittons. And I think it makes it more desirable. The older a piece is, the you know the more it's mm. lived the more it's traveled the more owners it's had but if it's in that great condition i think that really adds a desirability to it it's really easy well if you have the money it's really easy to just you know <laughs> waltz into louis vuitton and go buy a brand new one but to have one like that right. that's decades old mm. that's got all that history to it i think that's an incredible find what an absolute privilege to have your mum do that job <laughs> I know. And and they are more affordable, but in my eyes, they're more expensive because it does carry so much history. And it's the classic version. I mean, you're not seeing, in some cases, the leather you know, handles and that look kind of plasticky or whatever. This one is like classic leather and you can just tell that it's so well taken care of. So I love it. Now, I bet that gets so many compliments and so many people want to talk about that when you wear it. But what is the piece in your wardrobe that you would say gets the most compliments? Yeah, this is actually hilarious because I would never have thought that this would be what I get the most compliments on. I thought this was a purchase that I would wear on my own and just feel kind of like an old man. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. I am intrigued. I am intrigued by the old man element. (laughs) Okay, so this is my colorful old man sweater. And as you can see, it kind of has a puffy sleeve and it has these old old man button downs, but it's just such a beautiful sweater that I found at a boutique here in Denver. And again, I never thought that anyone else would like this besides me. I just saw it and I was like, lavender is one of my favorite colors. It's one of my brand colors. And every time I wear it, one the, literally this one time I was in a nail salon and this girl was like, I was hoping you would leave that sweater behind <laughs> so I could steal it from you. And, you know, I think it was about a hundred dollars. $120, but people love this sweater. And I don't know if it's because it reminds them of like a grandpa sweater or because it's just so unique, but I just, I love all the elements of it. And it's just, it's old. It kind of looks like anthropology. If you yeah. know anthropology, it's kind of old man style made new, but I get the most compliments on it out of anything in my wardrobe. And it's hilarious. I think it's the unusual color combination. I think it's that lovely kind of, you know, the lavender, the deeper tones, the kind of chartreuse tone to it. And then you add in the beautiful yeah. details of the buttons down the back as well. I think it just makes it a really unique yeah. piece. It's no wonder it gets so many compliments. I know. I love it. And I've seen Jennifer Lawrence wear something similar where she's rocking some leather pants. And I'm like, OK, so I can jazz it up and make it feel a little bit more modern. But I just I love it. It's great. Really great. What's the most expensive piece in your wardrobe? You don't have to share how much if you don't want to, but you can if you want. Yeah, I'm going to go back to another accessory, another luxury handbag, because again, this is one of my favorites that my mom found when I was like, I would love a Gucci bag. If you can just go out there and find me a Gucci bag. And I was looking for something a little more modern, a little more current, but she, again, found this tote and it is just probably the most expensive, but again, one of the most well-loved and I take it everywhere with me. So let me get that. 
I was looking to see if this has a date on it too because it has the tag still, but it doesn't. Anyway, all right, so this is my Gucci tote and I carry this around when I'm going to coffee meetings or whatever, but it is also decades old. You can tell that some of the you know pieces here you can find in new bags now, but it is just so in such good condition for being from the 60s, 70s, and it has that iconic... Gucci strap, the coloring detail here, but it's big. And I, you know, I thought I would get a Gucci bag that's small that I could carry around with me on trips and be a crossbody. But she was like, I found something that was worth the investment. And honestly, I just think that this is going to just grow with time and honestly just withstand so much time. Because again, these bags are built well nowadays, but when they were built back decades ago, they were just so detailed and they're just so high quality that I just think they're going up in price because it's just, it's such a collection piece now. So that's my favorite kind of expensive piece that I take with me to a lot of places. But also if I ever lost it, I would just freak out because it's it's a collector's item really. And I just love it. I was literally about to say the same thing. It is such a collector's item. I've never seen one in that silhouette with that combination of the colored handles, the very classic green and red colored handles, the monogram print. It's incredible. What an amazing piece to have. I know. It's such a good find. And, you know, again, you can find these pieces everywhere. And you have to be careful when you're looking at buying something that, you know, isn't directly from the store. But they're out there and they're being taken care of. And it's just amazing that we can bring these pieces back to life and make them more modern now. What is the newest piece in your wardrobe? Mm, okay, so this is so I recently launched a podcast. It's called The Happy Lead Her, and it's new to me to record so often because so many times I'm designing a website or having a meeting with a client, but I don't really care about you know exactly what I look like every single day. And so I wanted to go find some pieces that I could wear on camera and have them just have a little bit of style, a little bit of pizzazz to them. So I went to a boutique and again, I live in Denver, so it's very cold here right now. It's in the winter. And I found this sweater and I'm obsessed with it because I would never have chosen it for myself. But it just adds a little bit of detail, especially for those days where maybe you are on calls or you're meeting a new client and you just want to look put together, but also not have to you know, completely wear a gown or dress head to toe, right? So this is my new sweater. And again, I feel like we have so many good boutiques here in Colorado. And so, again, I wouldn't have chosen this sweater, but I love this detail over the shoulder here and the sleeve. If I could show you the sleeve, I just think it's so fun and the little pearl details. And just wearing something like this, you can kind of tell the color, but it's a light blue. It just adds a little bit of something for clients or you know, recording a podcast for someone to look at and be like, she put that together and you, you put it with a beautiful necklace and it's so simple, but it really changes your personality and how you're talking about your business or on the podcast or whatever. And I just love that we can wear pieces that every day they might look normal and typical and from just a boutique down the street, but they're just so, you know, they add an element of fashion and style and personality. And so I just I kind of went all out and bought like five new sweaters. But sometimes I feel like, you know, we just need to have a little refresh. So that's what I went with a little pearl detail and a light blue, which again, I never would have chosen for myself, but I love it. I love that. And I think it is all in the details. I'm a big fan of pieces with details. It's always the little details that, you know, somebody else might not notice, but you, when you're wearing them, you're really aware of them, whether it's, you know, an extra buttons down the cuff or something interesting in the print or the collar. But I think it's really interesting talking to a fellow podcaster because I'm always super aware whenever I film off the hanger that <laughs> I try not to wear the same things over and over. There's definite things in my wardrobe mm -hmm. that I would just be like, this is what I live in. I adore this piece. I'm going to wear it every single time. It looks great on camera. It's yes. my favorite thing. But then I know mm -hmm. that I wear, I rewear my wardrobe 
I do rewear my wardrobe yeah. all the time and I don't want to go out and buy new things to record a podcast on a weekly basis because that's just <laughs> excessive. So I think it is about accessorizing and changing things up. And I'm sure I've worn this shirt before, but then today I was like, oh, it's a bit plain. I'm going to put a neck scarf on. I do not. I yeah. did put the neck scarf on and thought, does this look like I've got a shiki or a love bite? Is this a thing <laughs> you would do to kind of cover it up if you had a hickey? And I'm like, I'm 41 years old. I definitely do not have. No, but I just thought, no. I'm going to put it on. I think it's cute and chic and I'm running with it. And, you know, I'm just telling you all out there, I do not have any sort of hickey or love bite. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. It's just an extra detail that, honestly, I've been focusing on your scarf rather than your top. And so if you wore that top, during 10 interviews, I still wouldn't recognize it unless it was the same head to toe. But I think it just adds a different layer of style and personality. And just it catches your eye more than a t-shirt that you're wearing or, you know, a blouse that you've worn on every single episode. And so I do think it's fun. And you don't have to go and buy something for every single call because I initially thought you had to do that as well. But it's just nice that you can change it up with accessories or or style your hair differently or wear a different lipstick. And so, you know, I think fashion is kind of like those paper dolls where you mix and mash different pieces and then it's like a completely different outfit. So that's what I love about it's it too. It's great. You get to express that creativity. Now, do you have a yeah. most sentimental piece? Are you somebody who's quite sentimental mm -hmm. when it comes to the things in your wardrobe? Yeah, I am because... You know, I think we can choose different clothing pieces and accessories and all these things. But when someone else chooses it for us, that means the world to me. And I'm actually wearing it on my neck. You can't see at the moment. But so, again, it's an accessory because I love accessories. And that's kind of how I start with putting my outfits together. But I mentioned to I feel like I talk about her all the time on this episode. She's going to love it. But my mother, <laughs> I mentioned to her that I wanted an everyday necklace that I can stack. Because as you can see, I have a gold chain necklace, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later. But I love to layer my necklaces and be able to wear necklaces every day, you know, in the shower or if I'm going for a swim or working out, whatever it is. I just want to have some kind of jewelry there because it makes me feel put together and it makes me feel a little bit more confident. And so my mom bought me this um, yellow gold necklace with a pearl on it and a white gold necklace. And they are the two necklaces that I wear every single day of my life. And again, it doesn't have to be super expensive or super fancy, but these necklaces represent to me that, you know, you can, you can feel so confident and beautiful and also having a loved one you know, go and pick something out for you. She actually got the pearl in San Diego and then put together the chain and everything else for me back in Colorado. And so it was just so sentimental for me because, again, it's it's someone going out of their way to just, you know, listen and be like, you, I know you mentioned that you wanted some some necklaces you can layer. And so I went and found this for you and literally sourced the pearl by the ocean. And so I just think that is, you know, so nice. And now it's my own piece of jewelry that I get to share and talk about. But I think it's really special when people in our lives just do something nice for us. So I'll never forget that story, but also I'll probably never take it off. Either. I love it. I love that. And I, interestingly, I have a necklace very similar to that with quite a similar story. When I was maybe Ooh. 11, I think, my sisters and I went to Florida on holiday with my dad and my stepmom. And there was a place where you went and they would, uh, you would pick an, an oyster, you would pick a shell and then they would shook it open for you and then there would be a pearl inside. How they knew there were pearls in them, I don't know. And then they would tell you yeah. kind of the color and the grade and the rarity and we all kind of picked one out and I still have that necklace now. It's still in oh my, my jewelry gosh. box and it's something that my dad got for me and he got one for both my sisters as well and one for my stepmom. And it was just a, such a memorable experience of the man yeah. opening these shells and there being a pearl inside. It blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's so special. That's literally what my mom did too, is you find the shell. And again, I don't know how they know, but you pay ahead of time or whatever. And I, I love that it's classic too, because you had that when you were a child, when you were 11, but now I'm in my 30s and 
I'm still rocking it. And yeah, I love I love pearls. I wouldn't wear like a full pearl necklace probably, but it's just a fun little detail. So you should wear your necklace. Too. I know. It's really fun and relevant. I add it to my stack, <laughs> my little, little collection, because yes. I am the same as you. I love to always have a little stack on and it's always the same too, but maybe I should introduce the pearl in there as well. Yes, you should. <laughs> what would you say is the piece in your wardrobe that most sums you up? Oh, so I'm wearing that as well. I'm wearing this kind of like black leather bomber. I know it's a little bit hard to see. It has a zipper down the middle and these kind of flaps. I wear this leather jacket too often, I would say. (laughs) I've worn it during different brand shoots and during different phases of my life, being in relationships, being single, traveling. I've just, I've taken it everywhere and people really know me for wearing a leather jacket. And what's funny is, I I was doing a recent brand shoot for my podcast and I was like, I'm not going to wear the leather jacket because I feel like I wear it all the time. And so I did the shoot without the jacket. And then someone said to me, where's your leather jacket? I always see that for you. And that's so iconic. And that's so Lindsay. Where's your leather jacket? And it's just funny because, again, I I don't wear it every single day, but I wear it, you know, when I'm going out and I want to feel good or bring it along with me. And I just love that people know me for it because it's such a classic piece. But, you know, I I found it. I was saving my money up for a leather jacket and it just makes me happy. And it goes with so many different looks and you can dress it up and down. And I love that it lasts forever. I mean, I've had it for probably, I don't know, six years and it still looks like new and there's no you know, it's just really well built and something that you can take with you for, I, I'm assuming I'm gonna still going to have it for 15 years, you know, you never know. But I just love that it's so classic and it has so many details and it's comfortable. And I love that people also know me for it, which I didn't realize that I wore it enough for people to say, why aren't you wearing it? Um, but I do just love a good leather jacket and this one's my favorite. Like your signature style piece is brilliant. Yes. Now, yes, it would is. Would you like to join my club of mishaps of wardrobe malfunctions and fashion faux pas and general disasters that happen? I absolutely would love that. Yes. So, I, as I briefly mentioned, I used to be a journalist. I worked for a magazine, and while I was learning marketing, I was having this kind of part time incredible career as a journalist and I was the editor-in-chief of a fashion magazine and I got to produce some fashion shows which was again a dream as like a 23 year old it was so much fun but I remember you know having to have so many different looks as a 23 year old for this fashion show it was three days and we had a morning event and then the evening show And so I remember trying to figure out what am I going to wear? Because again, I'm 23 years old. At the time, there wasn't these, you know, rent the runway or these uh, different options for us to rent looks without having to spend a lot of money. And so I had two outfits that I loved and I was obsessed with. And, you know, I don't know where I got them, but in our kind of higher end mall. And then for the last night, it was kind of this like rocker night. We had a band there and it was just kind of a, you know, a fun celebration. I remember going to Forever 21 because that was a really big (laughs) thing when we were in our 20s. And I just remember like, oh, this isn't going to be a big deal. This is just the closing of the show. And so I got these leather shorts and I wore tights and then I got this uh this white top that was see-through and it had kind of embellishments on it but as I would hug people it would rip it would like literally catch on to what they were wearing and just like slowly rip away and I had no idea that my top was doing this and it was a longer top it was kind of you know as not as long as my leather shorts, but definitely a statement piece. Like everyone could see that I was wearing this top and it just slowly started to decay. And by the end of the night, it was just completely shredded. And I tried to own it and just say, oh, that was the look and that was supposed to happen. But I've definitely learned that, you know, quality pieces of clothing, they don't have to be super expensive. But that was definitely my biggest mistake that I've made, especially being in front of like 2000 people wearing this top that just completely was shredded. But 
I tried to own it. I don't think that worked, but you know, we all learn from <laughs> our experiences. We live and learn. We live and learn. I'm forever 21. We do. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> do you have a favorite pair of shoes that you'd like to share? So something about me is I love a booty. I probably have 20 pairs of booties, ankle booties, and I just love them. They just make me feel sexy and you can wear them with anything. And so I actually bought these boots um, this year and they're a little bit different for me because of the toe, because I usually go for a pointy toe and I kind of felt like that's the only style of booty. But these are Franco Sartos. And it's kind of a squared toe. And so I was like, I'm going to try something new. It's a little bit of a snake skin, but also the heel is a shiny heel. And I just thought, you know what? These are really fun. They're really different. And so now these are like my go-to booty. And I also love this brand now too, because you can find it so many places, but Nordstrom is one of my favorites to go get booties because they have so many options. And I just thought I saw these and I was like, I think these are going to be my new go to. And I get a lot of compliments on the square toe because I also think that's a little bit different. But yeah, they're my they're one of my favorite boots to wear now. So and I bet they work great with the leather jacket. They do. They go together so perfectly. <laughs> now, is there a dream fashion item that you are listing after? It doesn't have to be practical. It, you could have it irrespective of cost. The universe is literally just going to drop it in your lap from the goodness of its heart. What would you have? Yes. So I really, really want the YSL um, crossbody bag. It's It has this chain like strap or this chain and it's black because black is my favorite color. If you can't if you can put the, up that, uh, oh my gosh, if you couldn't pick that up, but I also have a chain necklace and I just feel like that brings my two loves together. And so I really want that bag and I know it's a new bag. So I know that my mother cannot go out there and find it for me, but I've been saving up for this being a new entrepreneur. You never know, you know what that's going to be like in your first year, but that's the bag that I really want just because not that that will determine that I've made it, but it's just such a statement and it's just such a beautiful bag. I just, I love the branding of YSL and it's made beautifully, but that's that's what I really want to add to my Gucci and my Louis Vuitton connect collection that uh, has been, you know, built over the past few years. And I'm just really excited because I don't, I don't spend a ton of money on bags because number one, I find a lot of bags that are, you know, have history and they're not brand new to the store, but but that one I really want to invest in. I feel like that's a good investment piece and I feel like you can wear it with so many things. You can wear it with jeans or you can wear it with a silky gown, right? You can do whatever you want with it. But that one I I really have been thinking a lot about and I always look at it and I'm like, one day I'm going to go get that. So hopefully this is the year where I bring that home. Sounds great. And to finish on, do you have a piece of fashion advice that you would have given to your younger self? Ooh, absolutely. You know, when I was in middle school, I was, I loved fashion my whole life, as we discussed, and I loved to dress up in middle school. I loved to wear dresses and hats and socks with, you know, the little uh, lace and things like that. And I started getting bullied for it because not everyone likes to dress up. But what I've learned is you have to dress for yourself. You can't dress for other people. You can't dress just for the trends that you see out there because it is such a reflection of your personality and who you are as a human. And so I would just say, wear what you want to wear. And yeah, some people are not going to like it or agree with it or you know, say that you're overdressed or whatever it is. But I, I did stop dressing up for a long time in my life. And then I realized... I'm going to stop caring what people have to say, and I'm going to just dress how I want to. And so dress how it feels good to you and find those pieces that just light you up and that you could talk about on a podcast or to anyone. And that's what you're going to feel the best in. I think you're so right with that, because I think we are depriving ourselves of so much happiness. Yeah by dressing in a yeah. way to conform to other people's ideas of fashion and style. And actually, when mm -hmm. we do dress for ourselves, it brings so much joy and so much happiness. 
And yes, on occasion, you're going to get somebody who's going to say some sort of comment or some negative thing. It might actually be a friend or a family member, but who cares? Mm. My go-to response is, well, it's a good job you're not wearing it. it. I'm not asking you to wear it. It's literally, I am wearing it and I'm enjoying wearing it and you don't have to. And that's okay because I don't want to wear your boring clothes. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. That's so good. <laughs> Such a good response. Oh, it's been so good chatting with you. I've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to be emailing you asking if your mom can hook me up with some good bags. <laughs> Absolutely. She is on the prowl all the time. So she can definitely find anything that you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Off the Hanger. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe, comment, follow, leave a rating or a review, any of that good stuff. Thanks so much.